Welcome back everyone. This is chapter 2 part 18. In this part we'll talk about earned income tax credit policy application. So let's get started. Earned income tax credit um, gives you tax credit for the income that's earned in the labor market. So the requirement is to be working to be eligible. Okay. So here's the uh, rules for single mom with two children. Uh, earnings less than eleven thousand dollars you can claim tax credit of a maximum amount of forty percent so forty percent of uh, up to eleven thousand dollars let's say you make exactly eleven thousand dollars forty percent of it is four thousand four hundred so you not only make this eleven thousand plus you actually get another four thousand four hundred dollars okay that's how it works oops sorry so maximum credit you can earn is 4400 How did we find this? 11,000 times 40%. Okay. So net wage is, okay, 40% above actual wage, which means, let's say if my salary is $10, okay, if my salary is $10, it's 40% more. I am in reality making like $14. Till what level? Till I make $11,000 total. Okay, let's continue. So if this uh, single mom makes anything between eleven dollars to $14,370, less than or equal to, you still get to keep this $4,400. Okay, so it's available as long as you uh, earned in this interval. Again, these are older numbers. It's just an example. When earnings exceed fourteen thousand three seventy, after reaching the threshold, right, this threshold, the credit will be facing out. Okay, so what does it mean? For instance, if a single mom that makes hundred thousand dollars, I'm trying to draw a dollar sign. The computer doesn't want me to draw a dollar sign. <laughs> hundred thousand dollars obviously this person shouldn't be eligible right that's that's pretty good income um currently right and it even in 2005 obviously and you shouldn't qualify for government assistance this is for really low income people struggling okay so what does facing out mean facing out means each dollar earned Reduces credit by 21.06 cents. Okay. So each $10 you earn when after you make your $14,370 in the market by working, you're actually making not $10, but uh, what is it? Like 77.9 something, 7.8 something, something, 7.9. Okay. So your real wage is less than ten dollars so i want to show you what the earned income tax credit looks uh, like in a budget line setting so consumption here leisure here 100 hours of leisure f to you can call this point e okay so if there's no earned income tax credit you have this budget line slope is negative 10 because ten dollars is the salary as long as you earn less than eleven thousand a year eleven thousand dollars a year you can claim up to 40 percent of earnings which is let's say you made exactly eleven thousand dollars times 40 percent you get 4400 so if wages ten dollars your real wage is 40 percent more at fourteen dollars so higher the real wage steeper the budget line it's going to be than this red line okay you're gonna get okay this is very interesting if you earn in the market eleven thousand dollars eleven plus four thousand four hundred you're in reality at the map you're making fifteen four hundred fifteen thousand four hundred dollars so what does your budget line look like so you're gonna get a steeper budget line as we said net wage is 40% above the actual wage. So this F to E budget line, F E budget line becomes steeper, folks. And it becomes J E steeper, 40% steeper. So slope here is negative 14. Okay. Um, 
So where does it end, right? This, um, where is this J point? So basically, you just look at the maximum uh, threshold point, $11,000. If you make $11,000, that's your threshold of getting 40% above actual wage. So when you make $11,000, you're actually making $15,000. 1400 why because 11 plus 4000 this distance so your budget line pivots out swivels around this leisure uh, intercept okay so let's look at the second segment earnings between 11000 to 14370 still eligible for maximum credit that's nice so if you make anything if you earn anything between $11000 to 14,370, you still get that $4,400. So, earned income tax credit does not change real wage in this interval. That means budget slope is uh, the same as original budget line. So, we're going to draw a segment like this. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be parallel to this original budget line. Parallel. Okay. So, I'm just going to delete it all right so let's see where this parallel line ends so it's gonna end at some point like h and how did we find this point okay so first of all if you earn eleven thousand dollars plus four thousand four hundred you are making fifteen thousand four hundred dollars total right so now if you made fourteen thousand three seventy that's the maximum threshold eligible for maximum credit we, what we do is you make 14,370 plus 4,400 so you're actually pocketing 18,770 okay so how did we find this start with 14,370 hit the original budget line go up until you hit the 18,770 okay so after this remember so you get to keep the same net wage so this is negative 10 negative 14 slope slope of this is negative 10 that's the wage rate next segment is going to be when you you know this needs to go back to this somewhere right and when you actually are making less than the real wage rate why because now facing out happens so once earnings exceed 14,370, this is when I say earnings, I'm talking about you work in the market and you make this money. Earning income tax credits start facing out at the rate of 21.06 cents per dollar earned. So if your wage is $10, your real wage is, right, $7.89. Why? Because $2.106 phases out, all right? So you're going to get a flatter budget line. When does, so the question is, when does this 4,400 completely dim diminishes? So first of all, I know this budget line is going to get flatter like this, something like this. Okay. So imagine we had FE original budget line. I'm just making it wavy. Okay. Our budget line becomes something like this. It becomes a kink, kink kinked budget line okay so the last question is how can i find this point right to be able to draw it it's very easy actually so here's the question one dollar earned reduces credit by 21 cents right i should be earning x dollars to lose all this four thousand four hundred dollars so we do direct proportions multiply one by four thousand four hundred and x by 0.21 so credit completely disappears so what happens is, is 1 by 4400 1 times 4400 equals x times 0.21 this is called direct proportions we use in math to find like when i will be depleting all this for so divide everything by 0.216 right 4400 divided by 0 0.21 so if you make twenty thousand dollars eight hundred ninety three dollars twenty thousand eight hundred ninety three dollars about this right fourteen thousand three hundred seventy then you will lose your uh 
income tax credit completely. So it's 20,893 made on top of this maximum. So if a mother makes more than $35,263, we just added them up, you lose the earned income tax credit completely and revert back to regular budget line. So here net wages 21.06% below the actual wage, so it's negative 7.89, okay? So this is what earned income tax credit does to my budget line. So what is going to happen? Earned income tax credit creates kinks on budget line, right? I had initial budget line FE, now I have F, G, H, J, and E. So let's consider different individuals. Individual one initially at the endowment point, not working at all, all right? Optimal leisure is under 10 hours. So it's possible for this person to now jump to a higher indifference curve. Maybe move to point R, optimal point. What does it mean? This person actually is participating now in the labor force. Leisure is less than 110. So earned income tax credit may draw new workers to the market, right? Because every $10 I make, I'm actually making $14 up until that threshold. So probability P is for probability. Probability of work increases labor force participation rate increases for those who were not initially working second group so this is a group of people initially already working but few hours initially at point p working certain hours leisure is positive but hours of work is positive too that means you know this is my hours of work right this person is working initially the single mom so this person can actually jump to a higher indifference curve just like that because new budget line is this kink budget line right, right now. So this can actually, look at this, my leisure has increased, right? My hours of work went down, all right? So P to R, earned income tax credit may decrease hours of work, increase leisure possibility. Leisure increases, hours of work decreases. Another example, an individual who has very uh, few leisure, right? Initially at point P, working, positive leisure, positive working hours, lots of working hours here. So this person can move to a higher indifference curve in the new budget line to point R. Again, you see leisure going up, hours of work going down. So Earned income tax credit may decrease hours of work, p r Leisure goes up, hours of work decreases. So for this mom, initially at point P, this person is working already a lot of hours, right? So potentially, no change here. Potentially, you see this person working lots of hours. This person is not affected at all. So there will be no change in this individual's preferences okay so earned income tax credit theory suggests two distinct effects on labor supply earned income tax credit increases the number of participants in the market more people enter the labor force to take advantage of it so it is these people boom they were at endowment point they weren't initially working then they start working there may be oops there may be no change Second one is earned income tax credit may change the number of hours worked for those who are already working in the absence of program. So it may decrease the hours of work. However, depending on preferences, these people, if leisure is an infer inferior good, they could actually work more or maybe no change. I'll see you in the next part where we'll talk about natural experiments and difference and difference estimator of earned income tax credit. See you then.